All right, and we'll jump right into things. First tight end we have on the list here is Michael Mayer, 22 years old. He's expected to go in the first round of the NFL draft, 6'5", 250, ran a 4'7", uh, decent speed, absolutely no burst, no catch radius. This guy is uh, being compared to Zach Ertz for a lot of good reasons here. I'll start with you, Coop, on Michael Mayer. What is it that has people so excited with this guy, and why is he the safe option as the tight end one of this class? Yeah. Well, the reason that he's so safe is because he gives you the full package. Like he's going to be an every down tight end in this league. We know he can crush people blocking, but he's not at risk of just being a blocking tight end. Like no one's going to draft this guy where they have to draft him and make him Drew Sample, right? Like he's not going to be Michael Pruitt. Like he's going to be a two way tight end, which in the right system, Works really well for fantasy. As you kind of alluded to, though, the problem, of course, is uh, guys like Zach Ertz, guys like Hunter Henry, where they run that 4-7 range. Uh, he's a little faster than those two guys, but still, when you watch the highlights, uh, it doesn't. you can see where the issue is going to be. This man is going to need targets, right? You look at Zach Ertz. He's a guy that had uh, one 1,000-yard season in his career, surprisingly. And he needed 150 targets to do it. All those seasons with 100 targets, he only had the 1,000 yard season, and that's because Yak, it uh, sorry speed, it doesn't just translate to Yak. It trans it translates to ADOT. It translates to uh, being able to beat certain players in one on one situations. It be it it really translates into turning a 30 yard catch into a 70 yard catch like George Kittle does. So you're not going to get that from this guy. That's why I have no pro- like I have no problem ranking him at one. If you're conservative, I have no problem ranking him as low as three. If you just like other guys better, some people are getting a little too cute, putting him like at like, you know, five or whatever, like he's going to be a good player. But uh, again, when you look at the guys that have his speed, Ertz, Hunter Henry, TJ Hawkinson, like again, situation targets, those are going to matter versus some other guys that like George Kittle can do it on way less targets than somebody else. Yeah, I know you're a big proponent of, um, opportunity situation driven for these guys. I don't know if you want to touch on because it's going to be relevant for every single one of these guys. Two quick things. I know you have a special acronym you like to go through for identifying yes. situations where tight ends are going to succeed. And I know you're really big on the real football aspect of these tight ends and where they like to line up and how that impacts fantasy. So if you quickly want to touch on the roles tight ends play and what situations we look for for these guys to really step up Yeah. So I'll make it easy. Uh, So there's two articles. One, the first one you alluded to with the acronym, that's the SORT system, S-O-R-T, and that's Start Opportunity Roster Talent. It should be Roster Talent Start Opportunity, but that's not a word. So I had to move those around a little bit. So for the sake of the acronym, the and the way it's pretty simple. You want to draft as many guys that you believe in the talent that you think that they uh, have long term upside, have the attributes we like to see, and hold them as long as possible. But when you are competing to win, when you are a top three, four team in your league, you might need to go out and trade those guys or trade other picks for guys that have the opportunity, even if you don't think that those guys are in a in a vacuum are better. The problem you run into is that with rookie tight ends and and any tight end, honestly, is they need opportunity. That's where the second article comes in. If you type Andrew Cooper dynasty rookie tight end concepts uh, into Google will come up. And the problem that you run into is you need these guys to be not only the best pass catching tight end on their team, but a top two target on their team. Right. So you'll have guys like Vernon Davis stuck behind, sorry, Delaney Walker stuck behind Vernon Davis for seven years. And then he gets moved to Tennessee, has three top five seasons in a row. Or you'll have guys uh, like Darren Waller where there's no opportunity. And then all of a sudden, Antonio Brown gets kicked off the team. Henry Ruggs goes to jail. And now he's getting all the targets in the world. Right. Like you have to look for those guys that have the opportunity at the right time. And think about how many guys in your leagues held on to Johnny Smith or held on to Dallas Goddard during like 2020, these years where they were like not even in the top 20 tight ends. Meanwhile, another kid in your league goes out and gets Logan Thomas and wins the league or somebody goes out and gets uh, Robert Tunyon. Sometimes you got to sell out for opportunity. So that that's the idea. Uh, Obviously, in the in a perfect world, we get a marriage where a really good pass catching tight end gets drafted by a team like the Green Bay Packers, where they can play slot right away, right? So uh, that's the end goal. But we we still we want to think about 
what kind of tight end room they're walking into, what their job's going to be as part of this room, and and figure out when that window's going to open, right? 100%. Yeah, Green Bay that you bring up. I mean, that's my favorite spot, I think, for oh, a tight it. end to land. If not a tight end, Josh Downs at 43. Just a guy who can come in right away and just dominate slot targets. The team really doesn't have it. A guy to be that yin-yang to uh, Christian Watson, you know, kind of the deep, short. So uh, there's a big opportunity for targets to come out of that team. Uh, I know a lot of managers are excited on Dallas and Cincinnati. Uh, those might not be as perfect on day one, but you can paint yourself the picture how right, down the right. line it could really open up nicely for guys. Yeah. The real nightmare spots are ones like, uh, thank thank goodness that the Falcons traded for John, Johnny Smith because that was shaping up to be a nightmare spot where they have Kyle Pitts and then they draft somebody to be the inline tight end. That that's horrifying. Like picture what Hunter Henry now has to do as the inline tight end to Mike Gusecki, right? Yeah. This is what we want to avoid. And and even for the short term at times, like Cole Komet playing behind Jimmy Graham or Dallas Goddard playing for years behind Zach Ertz, you want to think about okay, if my guy gets drafted here, what's his job going to be? We want him to be the best pass catcher in that room when the tight end coach looks around and says, all right, who's doing what? So that's a big part of it, and that's why. This position, more than any other, we do really have to care about the draft data, where guys, the, not just the draft capital, not just the landing spot, but also the narrative of the draft. Like, did this guy, like, what order did these guys get picked in from just the position and everything? So, a lot to think about, excited for the draft, but let's talk about the players themselves so that we can start figuring out who does what, right? Like, who does what so that when they get sorted out, we can say, oh, wow. This guy does exactly what we want, and he landed with a team that we love. Or we can say, okay, we were worried this guy would end up blocking. Now he landed in a spot where he's going to be the blocking tight end. Let's cross him off. Absolutely.